Look at the following pictures and identify the actions. T being strained. Yolk being separated from egg. Waste being separated. Peas being removed from pods. What is the common thing in every action? Separation. Why separation is needed? Let us learn. Separation of substances. Class 6. Science. Separation is necessary when we need to remove unwanted things. For example, you can remove unwanted chilies from food by picking them with your hand. There are many other instances where we need to separate one substance from another. There are different methods of separation. Let us learn about them. Threshing Grains or seeds of plants such as rice and wheat serve as sources of food. The flour or atta that is used for making chapatis is made from wheat grains. After these crops have been harvested or cut, the grains need to be separated from the stalks, that is, the dried stems. This is done by threshing. The process of beating harvested crops to separate the grains from the stalks is called threshing. It is done manually or with the help of machines. Manual threshing is done by holding a pile of crop and beating it on a rock or a hard surface. This loose wanes and separates the grain from the stalk. Threshing is also done with the help of machines such as combine harvesters. A combine harvester rapes, threshes and also cleans the crop in one operation. Threshed grains may still contain seed covering and tiny pieces of leaves or stem. These are separated by winnowing. Winnowing The method used to separate chaff from the grain by wind or blowing air is called winnowing. The mixture of chaff and grain is taken in a winnowing basket. The farmer stands at a higher level and lets the mixture fall the ground. The grain being heavier falls almost vertically. Whereas the lighter chaff is carried away by wind and forms a separate heap away from the grain. The separated chaff is used as fodder for cattle. Hand picking Rice Wheat Pulses etc. that we buy from the market may contain impurities. That is, unwanted harmful particles in the form of small stones. Unwanted grains, etc. Often these impurities look every different from the food items and can be spotted easily. The method of separation used in such case is hand picking. Sieving. If the components of a mixture are of different sizes, they can be separated by sieving. The smaller component passes through the pores of the sieve, whereas the larger components, such as stones or husk is left behind in it. This method is used in some homes to separate wheat bran from flour. However, sieving wheat flour is not advisable as wheat bran, which is removed during sieving, is very rich in nutrients and is also rich source of fiber. It is better to remove visible impurities by hand picking. The process of sieving is also used to separate pebbles and stones from sand at construction sites. The stones and pebbles present in the mixture remain in the sieve and the fine sand particles pass through the holes of the sieve. Sedimentation and decantation 
Have you seen pulses being washed in your home? When pulses are kept in a bowl of water, they settle down as they are heavy. However, dirt, insects, tiny pieces of straw, and other lighter impurities float at the top. The water, which contains these impurities, is then poured out and discarded. This process involves two methods, sedimentation and decantation. The process of separating insoluble solids, suspended in a liquid, by allowing them to settle down is called, sedimentation. The solid particles that settle down during sedimentation are called, sediments. The process of pouring out the clear upper liquid without disturbing the sediments, is called, decantation. The liquid above the sediments is called supernatant. A mixture of sand and water can be separated by sedimentation and decantation. The mixture is left undisturbed for some time. Sand, being heavier, settles down and water is poured out into a separate container. Filtration The process by which two substances an insoluble, and a liquid, are separated by passing the mixture through a filtering device, is called, filtration. Filtration is commonly used in our homes. Filtration is also done to remove pulp from fresh fruit juice. Water may also contain solid impurities that can be removed by filtration. During filtration, the insoluble solid is retained in the filtering device, whereas the liquid passes through it. It is important that the particles of the insoluble solid are bigger than the holes in the filtering device, for them to be retained in the device. A filter paper is a filtering device, that has very fine pores in it. Evaporation the process in which, a liquid changes into a gas, is called, evaporation. In this method, the mixture is heated. The liquid part of the mixture evaporates leaving the solid part behind. For example, a mixture of common salt, and water, can be separated by evaporation. In fact evaporating seawater is one of the oldest ways to obtain salt. Condensation The process in which a gas changes into a liquid is called, condensation. Condensation is the opposite of evaporation. In nature, water vapor in the air condenses to form its liquid form, the dew. Condensation takes place only when water vapor hits a cold surface. Solution and Solubility when some salt is added to water and stirred, the salt disappears. This is because the salt has dissolved in the water. Dissolving is a change where substances mix completely with the liquid they have been added to. Not all substances dissolve in water. Only some substances, such as salt and sugar, dissolve in water and are known as soluble substances. Substances such as chalk and sand do not dissolve in water and are known as insoluble substances. The substance that dissolves is called the solute and the substance in which the solute dissolves is called the solvent. The resulting mixture is called solution. For example, sugar plus water equals sugar solution. If we keep adding a spoonful of sugar, to water, and stir the solution each time, what will happen after some time? We will notice some grains of sugar at the bottom of the solution. This shows that no more sugar can be dissolved. We see that the solution has become, saturated. A saturated solution is a solution, in which no more of the solute can be dissolved. 
but what if we heat the solution? Can we then dissolve extra sugar present in the saturated solution? Yes. We can increase the solubility of a solute by heating the solution. Solubility is the ability of a substance to get dissolved in a given liquid. The quantity of a substance that can dissolve in hot water, is much more as compared to that in cold water. There are some other factors that affect the rate of solubility of a solute. Stirring We can observe this by taking two glasses of water and adding a spoonful of sugar to each glass. Then we keep one glass undisturbed and stir the other. Sugar dissolves faster when the solution is stirred. Solute in powdered form we can observe this by taking two glasses of water and adding a whole sugar cube in one glass and powdered or crushed sugar cube in the other. Sugar in the powdered form dissolves first. Different substances dissolve in different amounts of water while making a saturated solution. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe my channel, and do not forget, to hit the bell icon to stay updated. Your comments and suggestions are valuable to us.